Outstanding! Hi everybody, I'm Lauren Inglis, Regional Director of Arfin International Group Middle East and India, and today I am super excited to introduce our first guest on the show, Mariam Nevaid Otimo Fiore. Mariam is a mother of three children, an expat author, and is on the board of directors for a company called Families in Global Transitions. She runs an interesting blog and Instagram page and has relocated to her 10th country. Stay tuned as we follow Mariam's global mobility journey. Relocating to a new home. New people. New schools. New beginnings and new adventures. Shared with all, right here on my expat moving story with our host, Lauren Inglis. Welcome, Mariam. We're so pleased to have you here on our show to share your experiences of all of your moves around the world. Let's get started on the questions. First question I'd like to ask is, please, could you tell us about your earliest relocation? Where were you headed to and how you were feeling about it? Were you excited, nervous, apprehensive? What made it worthwhile in the end? Could you share some fond memories with us? Sure. Thank you, Lauren. Thank you so much for having me. And I'll be very happy to share <laughs> um, all my stories of relocating to different quarters of the world. Um, but yeah, uh, in terms of my earliest relocation, I guess I would pick um, the time, Lauren, I left my home in Karachi, Pakistan on and relocated to Boston, Massachusetts in the US. I was 18, almost 19 years old, and I was leaving home for the very first time. Um, and it was incredibly thrilling to be holding uh, a blue suitcase in one hand and a one-way ticket in the other. I think just that thrill of having a one-way ticket in your hand is a feeling that is um, so hard to capture, but it's that mix of adrenaline and excitement and nervousness mixed in with what you're about to do and this big adventure you're you know, about to embark on. But the reason I was so excited, Lauren, was because this was the first move that I made, which was my choice. Um, I, you know, had experienced I had uh, moving as a child. I had moved around in my early childhood with my family, with my parents, and I had moved for my dad's career. And I felt like I never had a choice in those moves. So this felt quite different because I think when you're in the driving seat and you're moving because you want to have that experience, it's something totally different. So yes, there was nervousness. Yes, there was, you know, concern. Uh, I was flying into Boston's Logan Airport shortly after 9-11 had happened. And it was a crazy time in the world. Uh, yeah. for me yeah. doing that all by myself but you know I do feel for my parents I think it was probably tougher on them <laughs> than it was for me because I didn't think too much about it in hindsight I'm thinking oh yeah as a parent that's got to be nerve-wracking yeah but, you know, um it was great it was you know uh, this, this incredible change Scenery. You know, I left Karachi, uh, you know, heat, the heat, you know, and you live in Dubai. So, you know, when I describe that kind of clammy, sweaty heat where you feel like someone's holding a blow dryer on the top of your head. And yeah, yeah. You know, it's getting me now. Day. So, I get it. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And, you know, you exchange that and then next minute you're, you know, in Boston and it's so cold and you can barely feel your fingers and you're kind of, I still remember trying to turn the lock in my door. I'm not able to do it because it was so cold. My hands were literally shaking. <laughs> um, so, you know, that was my first relocation experience by myself. And um, I think that was something I'll always remember. I've done many moves after that as well. I mean, uh, another move I can talk about is my move from Berlin, Germany to Copenhagen, Denmark, which was my first corporate move with my husband. And, you know, I have very different emotions then. Uh, I guess that was my first corporate relocation. And I wasn't too excited about Copenhagen just because I felt like I hadn't lived long enough in Berlin. I had only been there for about a year and a half. And okay. as you know, yeah. it takes just six months to unpack your heart <laughs> when you move somewhere. And, you know, it you learns start feeling actually yeah. sexy. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> you know, it's just a different environment. I just managed to 
expert in that experiment is your some sense of, you know, um, capability of going and doing my grocery shopping and just doing normal everyday tasks. And then, of course, as soon as I learned German, my husband got this job opportunity to move to Copenhagen. So off we went to Denmark and there I was learning Danish, <laughs> you know, so it was a very different experience. And in the end, it was one of our best experiences. So I guess that's where I, you know, learned how to say never say never, because when it comes to relocation, <laughs> never say never, because you just don't know what happens when you live in a country that may not have been what you had been imagining but it opens up so many amazing things for you and that's what Denmark did for me it was one of our best moves oh that's good and aside from relocating to and living in all of these different countries and navigating the cultural differences language barriers way of life how have these moves affected your family life with three children and a very busy work schedule for both you and your husband? Yeah, um, I think we, as a result of all these moves, Lauren, have become this complex, um, messy family, a messy modern family, as I call us ourselves in uh, in my book, um, which means, and messy, you know, is, is a word which, because, you know, it has different connotations, right? It could be messy good and messy complicated. And that's really how it is for us. So in my family, we are a family of five, myself, my husband, and our three children. And, you know, Lauren, the five of us are born in five different countries. Um, <laughs> we, you know, when people ask us where we're from it's really hard to know where to start or where to begin to tell our story because you know we are, are born all around the world and and we wonder should we start by explaining where we're born or where we have grown up or where we currently live or where is home for us because if you ask us each family member will give you a different answer um, <laughs> so that can be kind of tricky and this happens like first day of settling in my children at school, their teacher will ask me, oh, where are you from? And, and I'll say, well, oh, I'm, I'm Pakistani. And my husband will say, oh, I'm German and, and Italian. And our daughter will say, oh, I'm from Singapore because that's where she's born. And so she says she considers herself Singaporean and tells people that that's where she's actually from. And so the teacher is just looking at us like, okay, um, <laughs> right. <laughs> who, who to believe or what's going on there? But you know, it's, it's that complex narrative where the more you ask, the more you know, we will tell you details. Um, so it's affected our family in, in this way that um, we have all these complex layers of who we are and our identity and sense of home and belonging is split up around the world. So it can be quite tricky to not belong to just one place, but we like to think that we belong a little bit to so many different places. And I think the more places, yeah, exactly, to the world. And the more places you live, the more places you have to love. And so that's really our story. But it has led to some complications in terms of, you know, relocation. Sometimes, you know, um, my husband's company will say, well, maybe it's time to repatriate you. And we would just think and like, repatriation to where which home country are we talking about That's mine so or his or we are home right? exactly exactly and i think this is a story for many expat families today where even repatriation the question that is quite central to, to the relocation process is not very clear cut anymore because so many people um you know uh, they've made a life for themselves around the world and it's so hard to now pinpoint where should you put uh, where should you repatriate them to because you know maybe their partner it, it may be home for them but may not be home for their partner or for their children or you know in our case I mean I left home at, at 18 I left Pakistan uh, my home country at the age of 18 and my husband also left Germany almost around the same time so we've never even been adults in our home countries we've never like held a job there or paid bills there or given birth there. I mean, I've never even driven a car in my home country because by the time wow, I came wow. to, age to drive, I had left, I had moved. So, you know, I mean, if you ask me as an adult where I even feel comfortable, all my experience has been on foreign soil. So it's very tricky. So I think repatriation and going home and all that is definitely a very complex process for us as a result of the globally mobile life. 
I agree. Definitely. Um, so From what Boston, I was in Massachusetts right after 9-11 as an 18 year old to corporate relocation all over the world. Then fast forward to moving as a parent. Mariam is a true globetrotter with a family of five, all who have been born from five different countries. They truly reflect being a global citizen. And as she says, gives them more places to love. What a great perspective. You are not gonna to wanna to miss part two of our five part special with Mariam Nevade Otimo Fiore as she shares her adventure of moving from Ghana to Portugal with her family while pregnant. Talk about a complicated move with an added challenge. How do you think it went for Mariam and her family? Well, you'll have to join us for part two of my expat moving story to find out what the move out of Africa had in store for her and her family. I'm Lauren Inglis for Arpen's My Expat Moving Story, where we live the life of relocation and love to share the experiences with all of you. See you next time.